I can't find anything that convinces me. I mean, I, as an American, um, and with America's, the role that America has played in the history of the church, you know, during the 19th and 20th centuries, I can see why people would really want to find where does this great powerful nation fit into the events. And so they, you know, try to see things in the prophetic record, Old and New Testament, that lets them say, yes, that's America. Uh, clearly, it's not named. Uh, there's no reference to America in the Bible. Uh, God actually named Cyrus when he was forecasting the return of the Jews from Babylon. But nope, we didn't get the name of America stuck in here, I'm afraid. Um, so any body who identifies America, particularly from the book of Revelation, they're, they're taking several speculative leaps, I think. And I, I'll just, I can only testify, I'm not convinced by any of the arguments they set forth. Does that mean I know they're wrong? No. It just means I can't say. I don't know. I believe America is, rent, is mentioned in the, in the 13th chapter of Revelation there also, as it says that another beast came out of the land. You'll notice that all the rest of the beast in Bible prophecy represented a nation. They all came out of the water. And in Bible prophecy, it tells us that water represents multitudes of people. The United States continent had 500 nations of indigenous people, but there were no 327 million people here. It was a sparsely uh, populated continent compared to everywhere else. This beast was coming up in a place where they was sparse. Where there was sparse population. And so it had two lamb-like horns. Two lamb-like horns represented the separation of church and state, but it spake as a dragon. I'm telling you, friends, lately you've seen the evidence that that checks and balance system has been stretched to the limits. A president of the United States, that office was designed to fit the person who had been elected as the most responsible servant to the American people. Now the American people gladly give themselves over to a king or a monarch. It's not the intent of the office. When you swear in in the military, the last thing you swear to do is defend the Constitution of the United States, not the president and not a party. I think one of the challenges when we're trying to interpret the Bible and we bring in geopolitical ideas is how much the world has changed over uh, two millennia since that time. The early believers, and this is important to know that when Revelation was written to a people in the early church, it had to mean something to them. And when we read the Bible trying to guess about different geopolitical realities, uh, I remember distinctly in my life when, you know, the Soviet Union was uh, the representation of all things that were bad. Uh, then what happens? Earthly kingdoms fall. Earthly kingdoms rise. Uh, could America be some sort of representation there? Possibly. But I don't believe reading the Bible in that way is helpful. I think that the universal themes of hope in the midst of persecution are the, is the main point of the book of Revelation, that we might find uh, great comfort knowing that Jesus Christ will win. He will return again and take his bride home, and that any suffering that we experience between now and then will all be worth it.
I believe America is mentioned in the Bible. Ezekiel, it talks about a, uh, a land called Tarshish. And the characteristics of the land is referring to north uh, western Europe and its colonies. And see, that's the key word, the colonies. Why would the Bible mention western Europe and its colonies? And as you know, America had 13 colonies when it was first uh, born. And it's easy to see some of the characteristics that the Bible talks about the nation. As one, it's going to be young compared to all other nations. So looking at Persia, looking at Asia, looking at, at Russia and all the other countries, we see that America is the youngest. It also speaks about America being a Christian-like country, or a Tarshish being a Christian-like country. And I want to set one thing clear for the record. It says our founding fathers came to America for freedom of religion. But let me, let me re-correct that thing that we take out of context, as I mentioned earlier. Because you can't take a context of what God says and apply it to your own uh, desire. So when our fathers came to America in search of freedom of religion, what that means is it doesn't mean to worship other gods. It doesn't mean, oh, I can worship myself or I can worship the universe. What it actually means is we can worship the one and true God, the only God that sent his son, Jesus Christ, we have a freedom to worship him in our own way, not mandated by the English church or by a ruler. And that brings to the point another section, uh, characteristic. The nation has the characteristic of not having a king or emperor. America, as you know, doesn't have a king or emperor. We have someone who is elected, a president. And let me just put on the record here, God has mandated authority over everything. So, you know, the president may not, you might not like the choice, but let me tell you, God has put someone in charge of us the way he sees fit. So anyway, back to the subject in hand. America is not ruled by a king or emperor, it's, it's by a president. The, the, second, the other point is America will have a global impact economy-wise. And whether that's good or bad, that's neither here nor there. America is one of those that have the impact globally affecting the stock markets. It also says that the nation will be a superpower. So I can't help but think of Russia, Asia, and America. It also says that the nation will have godlike ways but have turned away, and now what we see, we see that exactly. So no longer do we say one nation under God. Uh, there's people trying to take away, and God we trust. There's people trying to take away, you know, we don't need a God, we need the universe. So in my, in my uh, thoughts and beliefs, when Ezekiel was talking about Tarshish, it is talking about America. And just like Rome... America will fall. Uh, it, it, it's not mentioned anywhere but that one time in Ezekiel and Revelation. And after that, we see it no more, either because um, loss to economy, or I believe in what we see in right now is loss of culture. 